Greetings, my friends. I've already done my video for today. This is a bonus video. I'm just tired of what I'm hearing. I have to get this, set the record straight. I've done a couple of these in the past, and both times, social media who are God-hating and who try to uh, to spread racism, uh, obviously, by the way they act and by the way that they uh, conduct themselves. That's not my saying. That's just what I see from uh, the way that they do, do things. We'll throttle it like always and make sure it does not get many views, but the Lord will have it get the views it needs to get. First of all, let me say, it's totally wrong for anyone of any race to kill someone regardless. I mean, you shouldn't be out there killing people, whether you're a civilian, whether you're a policeman, whatever. It, it, it shouldn't be done, no matter what race you are, no matter what else happens. And let me read this for you. Again, this is all factual. It's none of my, it's none of my opinion. It's factual. The authors and faculty at Michigan State University and the University of Maryland at College Park created a database of 917 officer-involved fatal shootings just a couple of years ago for more than 650 police departments. 55% of the victims were white, 27%, less than half, were black, 19% were Hispanic, and 90-95% of civilians shot by officers were attacking police or other civilians. 90% were armed with a weapon. So-called threat misconception shootings in which an officer shoots an unarmed civilian after mistaking a cell phone, say for a gun or whatever else, are extremely rare. Let's understand that Trayvon Martin, I hear a lot about the Trayvon Martin case. Uh, Trayvon Martin was killed by a Hispanic, not a white. Um, Ahmaud Avery was killed by two rednecks who viciously killed a, a black man doing nothing wrong. They deserve to have the book thrown at them, and they'll get justice, I'm sure. Jamar, I'm just give, going over a few recent ones. Jamar Clark. Police and paramedics on the scene claimed that Clark had resisted arrest and had attempted to grab an officer's gun. Bystanders claimed he was handcuffed and on the ground. So this is, this is a he said, she said. They're, they're never going to get to the bottom of that one. George Floyd was trying to pass off counterfeit money when he was arrested. He didn't deserve to die, shouldn't have had the knee on his neck to suffocate him. But you also, but you, you can't also call him a gentle giant and a great guy, as his family says, when he's breaking the law. Do great guys break the law? I've never seen any person of any color who's a criminal who fit that bill. It also reminds me of the other gentle giant from several years back who was caught breaking the law by selling counterfeit movies in front of the store. No, he didn't deserve to die, but again, he was not a great guy, no matter what his color was, because he was committing a crime. And if you're not committing a crime to begin with, the cops aren't gonna be there to mess with you. Again, they shouldn't be killing you, but if you don't commit a crime, if you're a great guy and you're supporting your family and doing things legally, the cops won't be over there to mess with you and nothing's gonna happen, so understand that as well. You also never hear on the news when a black cop kills a white person, it doesn't fit their narrative, and if you watch it, their narrative, it makes you, it makes anyone with, with any intelligence at all, and I have an, a, a, a sky-high IQ of 176. God gave it to me, didn't deserve it. He gave it to me, so I'm very intelligent, and I can't wrap my brain around what looks like they're trying to, to start a race war by the way they do things. Around 200 whites kill blacks every year, while 500-plus blacks kill whites every year. White on white and black on black violence are about even. I grew up in one of the worst ghettos in America. I was called a, a black kid by most of my black friends because I was right there. There were very few whites in my entire neighborhood. It was mostly black, Hispanic, Haitian, Puerto Rican, Cuban. They, it, that's what, the way it was. And I saw racism. I know racism inside and out because I was, was racism was committed against me all the time. I also had great black friends who I stayed over at their house all the time. Their families were my families. Their mom and dad were my parents. They got my back. They fought with me when I had to fight against other blacks who were trying to, trying to, um, to, to beat me down. And I understand racism from both sides of the tracks, looking at it through a white person's eyes and looking at it from the black person's eyes. Because again, I spent more time in black people's home than I did anywhere else, almost as much time as I spent in my own home. And I understand the way that it is. I know the way that it is. Most of my friends my entire life have been black. And I know the way things go. And it's wrong for anyone to be killed because of their color. It's wrong for anyone to be to be murdered while they're being arrested. If it was wrong, the cops need to pay the price. But the bottom line is this. I get I went over the facts and showed you exactly what's going on. You can believe whatever you want to believe. I gave you the facts. Whatever narrative you want to believe is up to you. Racism needs to be healed, not just not just put out everywhere. Obama tried to make the, the U.S. into a racist bomb, and others have been doing it, and I'm tired of it, and I'm claiming get rid of the racism and start living like, like fellow brothers and sisters of all races, because Jesus Christ loves us all, no matter what your race is, and I do too. If you've never been saved or you're backslidden, pray the prayer I have in the, in the, in the box below the video. I love you. Share.